Hello everybody and welcome to another special Christmas edition of The Toy Shelf. I'm your host Mitch Live and I collect action figures. And this means that The Toy Shelf is now a whole one year old. Happy birthday to us. Our very first upload was on December 20th, 2019. It's hard to believe that it's only been a year because it feels like we've been together for so long already. And I have only one wish this Christmas, for everybody to subscribe to the Toy Shelf YouTube channel. Oh, and world peace and stuff, obviously. Instead of doing a full collection review, I've got some gifts here from various people. I'm just gonna crack them open, see what I got, maybe pop into some new toys. And we're just gonna spend this episode reminiscing about our last year together, some of our favorite episodes, and some of my favorite Christmas memories. And it looks like I've got a few here to open, so let's have a look. This one here says, to Mitch at the toy shelf from Jeff at Cool Stuff Toys. And let's see what it is. <sighs> Would you look at that? It's Faith the Vampire Slayer. Cause I gotta have faith, faith, faith. I gotta have faith, 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 baby. So this is a throwback to one of our most recent episodes. Faith originated on the show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and then her character continued on the spin-off show Angel. I never really got into Angel, but this is exactly one of the figures that I was looking for. Remember? There are still a few classic Buffy characters that I'm sort of keeping an eye out for, like Tara, Willow's witch girlfriend, or Faith, the vampire slayer, or Anya, the revenge demon turned human. And that clip is, of course, from our Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode, which you should definitely check out if you missed. I found this figure at Cool Stuff Toys a couple weeks ago when myself and off-camera Mike headed down there to donate some toys to their annual toy drive. And at the time, the Buffy episode was our most recent episode, so I was pretty stoked to come across Faith here. And they were just very generous, and they ended up gifting us this lovely figure, which I'm gonna crack into right now. Ooh. So uh, let's just really quickly have a look at the back of the box here. Uh, it shows some other figures that you can get from the series Angel, including alternates of Cordelia. We, of course, have a Cordelia from Buffy. It doesn't look that good. Then again, these photos of Cordelia from Angel also don't look that accurate. Whoop! So this is the diorama that she comes with. Uh, I'm not sure if it's from any specific scene because I'm not really familiar with the show, but it appears to just be some dark back alley. Uh, we've got a tipped over garbage can, and some typical garbage that we got an old doll, an eaten apple, an old spray paint can, oh, and a, and a little rat. And now we're getting into the figure. So the little diorama here also acts as a stand for Faith, who does look pretty accurate to Faith from Buffy and Angel. She comes with three different weapons. She's got a crossbow, a bow and arrow, and classic wooden vampire stake. Although I will say that this wooden stake looks so much more detailed and badass than any of the Buffy vampire stakes. Really looks like a pointed piece of tree there. And that is Faith the Vampire Slayer. She looks great and she's gonna fit right in with the collection. Thank you very much, Jeff from Cool Stuff Toys. Okay, I got some more stuff to get into here. This one is from, ah. Uh, this one's from Off Camera Mike. Off Camera Mike, you shouldn't have. Let's see what we got. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh. Oh my f It's Data and LaForge from Star Trek The Next Generation. Ha, ha, ha. Ah. Oh. And I didn't get you shit. This is another preview exclusive from Diamond Select Toys, and it features alternate versions of Data and LaForge, specifically from the two-part episodes, All Good Things, which is the series conclusion. Even though this is supposed to be an exclusive figure set, these figures are actually easier to come by than the original Data and LaForge, and they were the only two main crew members that I was missing, so very excited to get them. This is another one of those figures that I'm probably gonna leave in their box. Maybe if I find another pair for a good price, I'll, uh, I'll get them for display purposes. But probably if I purchase these figures again, it'll be the originals. We did an entire collection review of the crew of the Enterprise from Star Trek The Next Generation back in season one, 
If you missed that, you're definitely going to want to check it out. It's one of my favorite episodes of The Toy Shelf, and Off Camera Mike did a fantastic job with the intro, pretty much recreating shot for shot the entire opening of Star Trek The Next Generation. And if I do say so myself, I, I, I do a pretty good impression of Jean-Luc Picard. Let's have a quick look at the back of the box before I put this away. You can see advertised on the back some other figures available from this collection. They show uh, classic Data and classic LaForge. Also, they show Lore, Data's evil brother, which actually found a loose Lore and added him to my collection already. And Reginald Broccoli. I mean, Barkley. I mean, that's another figure that I still need to add to my collection. This is normally where I would curse the toy gods for making alternate versions, and believe me, this figure line makes a ton of alternate versions. <gasps> but it's Christmas, so we'll let it go. And I think I'm starting to notice a trend here. Perhaps all of the figures that I'm gonna open today are all missing figures from previous collections? That would be sweet. Because there's nothing quite like that moment when you find one of those last or really hard to find pieces for your collection. Oh, those are the moments that make it all worth it. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, this next package, this one doesn't say who it's from, so I'll just assume that it's from Santa. Thanks, Santa. Oh, 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 and it's a two-parter. Let's start with the smaller one first. We've got, oh, from the world of Nintendo, we've got a captured bullet bill. Say hi, Bill. Hi, hi Bill. Bill. So this is a captured bullet bill from Mario Odyssey, which means it's basically just Mario possessing the body of Bullet Bill. Doesn't sound creepy at all, right? And are they really all named Bill? I mean, there's no Bullet Bob or Barked or Ben? And what else have we got here? We've got a captured hammer bro. F***ing hammer brah. I don't think I've ever seen a regular hammer bro from World of Nintendo, but the Hammer Brothers are a classic enemy from as early back as Super Mario Brothers 1, and it's just a must-have enemy for the collection. And I wonder if his hat, I mean, sorry, I wonder if Cappy comes off, and then you have just a regular Hammer Brother. I guess there's only one way to find out. Oh, just before I destroy this beautiful box, let's have a quick look at the back. It shows some other World of Nintendo Mario figures that are available from this collection. One is Mario with Cappy, which we've had a look at in our Mario episode. And they show Explorer Mario, who comes with a blue moon. The other one is Mario with a captain's hat, and he comes with a red moon. And Lakitu, except this Lakitu is holding a little fishing rod where he dangles items for Mario. As opposed to Lakitu from my collection, where he's holding a spiny. Now we crack in. Well, the hat and mustache don't seem to come off, so he's always gonna be a captured Hammer Brother. And we'll have a quick look at the back of Bullet Bill before we rip him open as well. Uh, much smaller pictures on the back, but you can see some other figures that it's advertising. They show Mario with Cappy, Luigi, a Chain Chomp, and a captured Goomba. And again, they show Bullet Bill, who we've already got. Very nice. Very nice, very, very nice. So neither of these are those holy grail type of figures that I've been looking for for this collection, but they are very welcome additions. I still need to get me some Bowser Jr., some Dry Bones, some Waluigi, and they still keep making new Mario games and new power-ups, and they just keep making new figures based on those power-ups. So this is an ongoing collection, and I'm sure we are gonna revisit Mario in a future episode. And I have just one present left to open. This one says, to Mitch, from Mom and Dad. Ah, oh, thanks, Mom and Dad. Let's see what we've got. Da -da -da -da. It's a fucking 1992 Kenner Combat Belt Batman action figure new in its package. Ah! Ha 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 It's really here. I'm really, I'm really holding one. I'm really holding a 1992 Kenner Combat Belt Batman action figure. Oh! Now for me, this is one of those Holy Grail action figures from my collection. It's one I've been searching for for a very long time. 
The Kenner Batman figure collection is not only our very first episode, don't watch it, it's not that good, but this figure is also my first Batman figure ever and one of my earliest Christmas memories. When I first opened this package on Christmas back in 1992, I wanted to just run up in my room and play with it, and I just completely forgot about all the other presents waiting for me under the tree. My parents literally had to convince me to come back and open more presents. That is how immediately in love with this figure I was. This was the first figure based on Batman the Animated Series and the only figure in the collection that accurately depicts Batman from the show. My parents got me this exact figure back in 1992, so this is technically the second time my parents bought me this figure, just 28 years apart. And I still have the one that I opened back in 1992. Let's compare. From what I understand, there are actually two versions of this character, and the only really noticeable difference was the color in the belt. It's probably hard to tell by looking at it through the package, but I'm pretty sure that they have the exact same color belt, making them the same figure. And I'm not really sure if one belt color is supposed to be rarer than the other, or which one I have, but it doesn't really matter to me. I have none of the accessories that this figure comes with. I may have the yellow launcher somewhere, but there's no way that I have the grappling hook or the batarang that comes with it. The clip-on belt and the handcuffs were accessories that I either broke or lost in the first hour of opening this package. Four-year-old me just didn't have the same level of care for the action figures that I do today. There is almost no part of my loose Batman where the outfit looks like the color it's supposed to be that you see here in the package. That's because six or seven-year-old Mitch thought it would be a good idea to color him in with permanent black marker. I guess I wanted him to look more like live-action Batman. Luckily, six or seven-year-old Mitch also liked to bring figures into the bathtub, so most of the marker eventually washed off, as did the bat symbol on his chest. The cape that you see my Batman wearing is not the original cape. The dead giveaway is the bottom edge. The cape that comes with Batman has a spiky, jagged edge bottom, much more like the classic cape that we're used to. I can't even be sure whose cape my Batman is currently wearing. It's definitely not Robin, because Robin has a yellow liner inside of his cape, but it's definitely from a Kenner figure because it's got that same C-clip that fits perfectly on his neck. I just can't guess who it would belong to. If you think you know, please let us know in the comments. The back of the box shows the same Batman that we're looking at right now, as well as an alternate version, and a couple enemies such as the Penguin, which I do have in my collection, Two-Face, which I also have in my collection, and the original Riddler, which is still one that I'm kind of on the hunt for. I can still remember the feeling I got when I opened this figure for the very first time. It's that same nostalgic high that I've been chasing for most of my adult life, which is probably why this particular figure is so very important to me. So thanks, mom and dad. Of course, Christmas is not just about getting awesome gifts, it's also about giving. And in the spirit of giving, we are hosting a giveaway over on our Facebook page, which you can go and enter right after this episode. It's super easy to enter, and we're gonna let the winner choose their prize from a list of available figures to make sure that you get a prize that you really like. And again, all the figures that we looked at today were sought after pieces from collections that we've already reviewed in previous episodes, so please check those out. There will be links in the description below. And as always, there will also be links that you can use to purchase some of the figures that we've looked at today. Thank you to everybody for watching this video and to everybody who's helped support us this year. We're having a ton of fun and we hope you are as well. We also love to hear your feedback, so please let us know in the comments what was your favorite episode, what are some things you like about the toy shelf, what would you like to see more of, what figures would you like us to review next? We just love your feedback, so please keep it coming. And we've still got a bunch of stuff coming down the pipe for 2021. We're gonna start diving into the Marvel Select collection. We're also gonna look at figures from one of the most popular shows to ever be on television, and we're launching a new mini-series called That New Toy Smell, where we're gonna have a closer look at and review and unbox individual figures in more of a classic toy review video style. All that and more still to come this season on the toy shelf. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and the stupid little bell so that you don't miss any of the action. Another shout out to Cool Stuff Toys at 847 King Street East in Hamilton, Ontario, which is where we found both Faith and the 1992 Kenner Batman. Please remember to support your local toy stores this season whenever possible. And Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Season's Greetings, f 2020. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on the toy shelf. And remember, no matter what the mall Santa tells you, you're never too old to play with toys.
The cape that my Batman wearing, that my Batman wearing is no, no, no. The cape that my Batman wearing, <laughs> the cape that my, my Batman, Batman wear cape, cape good. The cape that my Batman is wearing. <laughs> and that's a wrap, a Christmas wrap.